Okay, so this is video number two on shut out. Um, I want to make this as short as possible so that, uh, well, you'll watch it for a start. Um, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing in lots of detail, but I am going to focus on making those links to a doll's house, which I think is what people are looking for. Um, obviously, before you go through these poems, I do recommend you read the study guides I added with the lessons. Uh, they're really thorough and they'll also point you to some more ideas. Anyway, so Shut Out, um, written in 1856, published 1862 again. What's interesting, you might have seen this in the notes, that its original title was What Happened to Me? Um, and again, we often get a lot of speculation about her personal life. Um, and how this is related in that way. But I think the point to make is this is seen as um, an allegory. Um, now, what that is of is entirely of your interpretation. And this is good for AO5 because there are lots of different ways of seeing this poem and what it could mean. I'll just point out the main kind of ideas going through it and then make those comparisons as I go through. So. Obviously, the first big obvious point to make is that first opening line, the door was shut. Notice that size zero. Again, when we make a point about um, details like size zero terminology, they're only useful in this exam when you are comparing them directly to a doll's house. But using a reference to the size zero in this first line could be compared to um, the image of the door or the stage directions of the door in a doll's house. So don't be scared of using um, kind of close terms like this, but you have to be using them to make a comparison. And so I think I've mentioned this several times. The word door in a doll's house is mentioned over 40 times. Um, the book end, the, sorry, the play ends with the slamming of the door. Um, and you also have throughout the poem um, the door to Torvald's office. Um, which is kept shut to um, uh, is kept shut to Nora for most of the most of the play. So this idea of exclusion is here. So you immediately have that connection straight away. Interesting again to note, and like I said, Rossetti is deceptively simple. It's the fact that it was shut. So it's quite passive here, and it's not entirely clear who was doing it. Um, so we straight away have that connection with this idea of doors and doors representing this um, separation or exclusion. And I think that's a really key um, kind of theme or symbol to look for in a doll's house um, and in these poems, because that will then tell you what this is an allegory for. So just to kind of, again, the main kind of themes that we're going to see connecting to a doll's house. Um, you then got this reference to her garden. Now that could represent several different things, but that use of this sort of possessive pronoun here. Um, interestingly for her, it's her garden. If you compare that to a doll's house, you have Nora and her secret, which she is so proud and possessive of. And then you've also got uh, Torvald and he feels that way about Nora. So this idea of possession is really important in both these texts. And obviously, depending on the context, your interpretation will change. We'll come back to that in a second. So um, just to kind of go through the rest of the poem, she has this garden. Um, you might immediately be thinking Garden of Eden. Now, that's obviously a very uh, worthy interpretation. And if you know your Milton or, um, well, just your Bible, basically, um, Adam and Eve being kicked out of that Garden of Eden due to Eve's temptation. So immediately you have this image of exclusion here. They were excluded from paradise because of Eve's temptation. Um, but of course, it's not entirely clear why the speaker, remember it's speaker, not narrator in poetry, is being excluded. So um, you then got another key theme um, which comes through, which is this shallowless spirit. Um, obviously, it, some people interpret him as being deaf as he is blank and unchanging like the grave. Um, some people see him as male authority. Um, so if you take that interpretation, um, that's quite an interesting one to compare to a doll's house. And you could think about who is excluding Nora. Is Torvald her 
male authority that is excluding her from certain things um, or is it society itself so um, what's interesting though is this image and we saw kind of we'll see reference to eyesight quite a lot in this poem um, is this idea of peering through so the fact at this point she can see what she's missing out on um, it reminds me of um, in a doll's house kind of um, Christina Lind is very aware of the Norris family and her children that she is not able to have herself of course until the end with Krogstad so again this idea of um, being able to see what you we, what you don't have making you want it more um, anyway we have that word outcast again and that's a really interesting one to compare is Nora the outcast because she is unable to live in that business sphere um, remember that contextual factor of the separate spheres and interestingly Christine is excluded from the domestic whereas Nora is excluded from the business kind of masculine sphere so that's another nice link here you know when we talk about what this garden could represent is it basically the other sphere that you're not allowed to be in um, so we then obviously have the confirmation that this is a masculine figure with uh, this male authority figure he answered not um, what's quite interesting is my home remember me until I come to it again now the fact that she's been there before some people take this to mean heaven the idea that she wants to return to heaven and obviously uh, that won't happen until she dies but either way the point being that she has been here before uh, we then have this rather passive aggressive bitchy spirit who now is building a physical um, barrier so she can't even see and then we've got the straining eyes here so she is blocked from even seeing it and you've got this sort of man-made um, wall here now of course if we link that to a doll's house we could be thinking about the man-made things that are stopping Nora from doing what she wants to do um, you might know some focusing on the female characters there is nothing to um, in fact I would recommend you think about the male characters as well so think about Krogstad um, his failings or his his outcast state and he is another outcast don't forget is because of man-made things um, because of reputation nothing to do with I guess his physical self it's all to do with other people's interpretations of him so he himself is being excluded and kept out and he again a bit like Christine seeing Nora with the children that she doesn't seem to like very much um, or Torvald rather Krogstad can see the sort of family home that he wants that he's excluded from until the end of the play so we then have um, this final image not the quite final again her being blinded so lots of reference to sight in her poems and sight you can think about knowledge um, the fact that she is now unable to see because of that and this loss of something um, so for her Eden I suppose or various things you could say and then um, I just added this note already because I had to look it up um, the Victorians do love their floriography which is the study of flowers so do look it up if you find it interesting um, each of their flowers had a different meaning there are lots of different dictionaries online though but the point being outside of her garden she's excluded from she has got other things she could have she has got violet beds um, a student last year actually had this brilliant interpretation that this lark has made her nest and again another hint at the domestic sphere that this lark is happy with um, but perhaps the speaker in this case perhaps it is Rossetti or not is not content with making her nest and being female like the rest and this lovely kind of um, couplet it's not rhyming couplet obviously but um, what I call syntactic parallelism which I can never spell um, just to show that she is not satisfied with the life she has oh, sorry. Um, so what could this represent well like I said you could think about the Garden of Eden um, you could think about uh, the image of um, women being excluded from the masculine spheres or the fact that Rossetti never married and I absolutely hate when people make this connection but perhaps here it does work um, 
Christina didn't have that family she wanted. She wanted to be a mother. Perhaps there's that link there that uh, Rossetti also did not have children herself. Lots of things I've read about this poem kind of link it um, to um, the end of Rossetti's relationship with James Collinson, which uh, I think did happen a bit before this. But the fact of the title, What Happened to Me, does suggest perhaps it is quite personal. So it, you, you would be forgiven for kind of going there with it. But um, either way, there are so many different interpretations here. Um, and one thing to remember, and it might be useful to look into, is uh, for Rossetti personally, she was female. And obviously, I'm not going to harp on about that. But um, her brothers were part of the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, which being a brotherhood meant she was naturally excluded from. She didn't hang out with them. She did submit writing to their publication, The Germ, but she was always on the outside. So that experience of being outcast, especially because of gender, is a, a strong connection here, which obviously Nora feels the same way. But again, don't forget Krog's dad. Um, he too is excluded because of his reputation. You could also talk about Torvald and how at the end of the play, he is the one who was shut out. Ironically, though, he is inside where she has left. So I hope that's useful to you guys. Enjoy. <laughs>